Education Mobile Quality E-Learning Experience on the go. Nigerian Vegetation, Forest and Forest Uses The type of agricultural activity to be engaged in a particular area depends on the environment. While some crops and animals are adapted to one area and thrive comfortably there, others cannot just exist there. Climatic factors such as rainfall, temperature, and wind determine to a large extent what plants and animals are adapted to an area. There is an important link between rainfall and the type of natural vegetation that occurs in an area. Talking about Nigerian vegetation belts. As we know, Nigeria is a large country with varying vegetation belts found from north to south. These belts run from east to the west of the country and are caused by rainfall, temperature, relative humidity, topography, and human activities on the land. The vegetation of Nigeria is divided into two major types, the forest zones and the savanna zones. The forest is divided into the mangrove forest and the rain forest, while savanna zones are divided into the derived savanna, Guinea savanna, Sudan savanna, and the Sahel savanna. Forest zones. In forest zone, the forest vegetation is found in the southern part of the country. The mangrove forest is found in swamps of the coastal creeks, the estuaries, and lagoons of southern Nigeria. The types of trees found there are the red and white mangroves, palm trees, and the lianas, that is the climbing and the twining plants. Examples of animals found in this forest are fish, snakes, crocodiles, and birds. In the rainforest, the rainforest is a region of high rainfall between 150 and 200 centimeters a year. Rain falls in this area for about 8 to 9 months every year and humidity is also high. It covers large parts of southern Ogun, Ondo, Oyo, Anambara and Delta states as well as rivers, cross river, Imo and Akwaibom states. The trees found in the rainforest are the Iroko, the oil palm, the mahogany, the walnut, the obeche, the rubber, etc. The animals found in this zone include monkeys, antelopes, grass cutters, snails, warthogs, etc. The savanna zones. The savanna zones covers as much as 80% of the country from the northern edge of the rainforest to the southern edge of the Sahara Desert. The savanna zones, as we've earlier said, is divided into the derived savanna, the Guinea savanna, the Sudan savanna, the Sahel savanna. In the derived savanna, farming activities have combined to degrade the original forest vegetation, leaving behind some fire-tolerant savanna species and a few forest trees. Animals found in the derived savanna include monkeys, giant rats, antelopes, etc. In the Guinea savanna, the Guinea savanna is the largest vegetation belt in Nigeria. It covers the sparsely or scarcely populated areas of the Middle Belt. This region is characterized by natural grassland, low populated or sparse woodland or trees. This region is dominated by tubers and grain crops. Animals found here include large animals like the buffaloes, the lions, elephants, which are kept in game reserves while smaller animals like giant rats, the wild cats, rabbits, etc. move about freely. The Sudan Savanna The Sudan Savanna has a longer and more severe dry period than the Guinea Savanna. Rainfall here lasts only 2-3 to three months and relative humidity here is low. This zone is characterized by sparsely distributed short trees with short and seasonal grass cover. The grasses are feathery and they give a continuous land cover. However, overgrazing and bush burning has seriously reduced the grass cover. The common plant species found here include the baobab and the she butter. The animals found here are similar to those of the Guinea zone but fewer in number due to lack of food or pasture.
the Sahel savanna. This is the most northern vegetation zone found in the eastern corners of Kano and Bornu states. It has barely 500 millimeters of rain annually and the dry season may be up to nine months long in the year. The zone is therefore characterized by very sparse vegetation with sparse thorny trees. The main vegetation layer consists of low growing shrubs which in some parts form a dense bush. The three varieties include the raffia palm and the acacia. The major crops are millet and sorghum, while vegetables and sugarcane are grown along the river beds and streams. Construction of irrigation projects like the South Shard project has helped to supply water for more agricultural production in these areas. Forestry and its uses a forest is an ecological habitat where trees, other plants, and many animals coexist. We have different types of forests which include the evergreen forest and the deciduous forest. The evergreen forest occurs mainly around the floodplains of large rivers. By the activities of man, the original high forest has been reduced to secondary forest made up of evergreen water tolerant plants which are of three different types which are of three different types one the upper layer is made up of very tall scatter trees of about 40 to 50 meters high which do not form any continuous canopy the middle layer is made up of trees of between 16 to 40 meters high, also scattered and do not form a continuous canopy. The lower tree layer consists of trees of between 10 to 16 meters high. The trees are closely packed, forming a continuous canopy. The deciduous forest. The deciduous forest is a type of vegetation of the derived savanna where population densities and farming activities have combined to degrade the original forest vegetation so that what thrives now is the fire tolerant savanna species, a few forest trees and grass savanna. The forest has influenced the environment in the following ways. One, it has helped to purify the air in that all living things take in oxygen for respiration and they give out carbon dioxide. Forests purify the air by utilizing the carbon dioxide for photosynthesis and releasing oxygen. Forests cause cloud formation and local rainfall over forest areas. Leaves of plants transpire. The high population of trees transpiring in the forest cause very high humidity and of course cloud formation and rainfall. Forests act as windbreaks in that they reduce the effect of strong wind on farmlands and bare soils thereby checking erosion and desert encroachment. Forest protects the soil from erosion by forming a thick cover on land which then reduces the impact of raindrops and also control erosion. Forest helps to increase soil fertility in that the leaves and branches of forest trees which fall on the soil decay forming humus which helps in improving soil fertility and also forest reduces evaporation of soil water in that the canopy of the forest leaves reduce the impact of intense sunshine on the soil thereby reducing evaporation of soil water forest plays an important role in the economy of the country through their following uses which include the supply of timber, the supply of food, medicines, to promote tourism, they serve as habitat for wildlife, they provide employment, they provide wood pulp, fuel wood, industrial raw materials, internal revenue and foreign exchange and they promote education. In the provision of timber, the timber derived from the forest trees provides raw materials which are used extensively in the construction and furniture industries. Forest supplies man with a variety of food in form of wild fruits, vegetables, animal flesh or bush meat which nourish the body. Forests also serve as medicines in that some forest trees are very medicinal. Their roots, leaves, stem and back can be used to cure a wide range of sicknesses and wounds. Such trees as the eucalyptus, the neem, the calabar are being used for making traditional medicine. Forests 
are important to the tourist industry. They attract naturalists, photonaturalists, and those who enjoy the beauty of the natural world. Forests serve as natural habitats for wildlife. They provide recreational centers or reserves for people who derive pleasure from searching for and looking at wild animals. Forests provide employment for a variety of people including the foresters, the forest guards, the game wardens, the wildlife and the game managers. Some forest trees are processed into pulp which is an industrial raw material used for making paper and newsprint. Human activities that affect forests include deforestation, bush burning, hunting and pouching, farming activities and industrialization and mining. Deforestation is the destruction of the forest or the felling of the forest trees. This does not only reduce the population of wild plants and animals, but it also exposes the soil to erosion. Bush burning destroys the tree species. Man often uses the practice of burning to recover a land after a long fallow period. This leads to depletion of wildlife. Hunting and pouching. Pouching is illegal hunting of animals in the forest. Hunting of any type disturbs the ecological habitats and causes ecological imbalance in the forest. Farming activities. When forest land is to be used for crop production or grazing animals, the trees are cleared, thereby eliminating the forest. In industrialization and mining, when the land is cleared for mining and industrial activities, the forest trees are destroyed. Forest management. In forest management, we have forest regeneration, reforestation, afforestation, forest reserve, and the Tongia system. Forest regeneration involves the rejuvenating of a forest. For example, if a forest is to survive, young trees need to be continually developed to replace the old mature ones as they are cut down. This process is known as regenerating. This is achieved by both natural and man-made processes like the selective exploitation, rotational exploitation, reseeding and self-seeding. Selective exploitation, this involves the felling of trees of a specified bed, age and growth. That means that mature trees are felled to allow the younger ones to develop and replace the felled ones. In rotational exploitation, this involves dividing the forest into many partitions which are then exploited yearly in rotation. Depending on the number of partitions, it can take up to 40 years to return to the first partition. Receding. In receding, forestry department workers intentionally scatter seeds of desirable tree species in the forest to enrich it many years later. Self-seeding. In self-seeding, some plants like neem, oil bean, rubber and the gamelia produce viable seeds which are dispersed by various natural methods and which can easily germinate. The young plants then replace their parents when they are removed. Reforestation Reforestation is the organized planting of trees to create forests in areas which have lost their forest characteristics as a result of burning, farming and indiscriminate tree felling. Afforestation, as another forest management technique, is the establishment of forests in areas where there has never been any forest. It is aimed at reducing soil erosion and preventing desert encroachment, especially in the north, close to the Sahara Desert. Forest Reserve This is a piece of land set apart for the preservation of economic plants and animals. The suitable reasons for turning a piece of land into forest are to increase soil fertility, to prevent natural hazards like erosion and desert encroachment, etc. The Tongia System the Tonga system involves the integration of crop farming with forestry. The forestry department occasionally cuts down parts of the forest reserve in succession and gives them out to farmers under specified conditions. The farmer is then provided with fertile forest land on which to grow his crops. 
We also have deforestation. Deforestation is the destruction of forest and it may or may not be deliberate. There are some forest regulations which we should know. They are 1. Licenses to restrict hunting and fishing. 2. Restrictions on cutting down trees for farming or buildings. 3. Orders to restrict overuse of forest for industrial raw materials. Here, forest trees should be felled only when they are mature by selective exploitation. 4. There are fire regulations to prevent the indiscriminate or wanton setting of fires.